So Kubernetes is being used by a lot of companies all over the world. So I've decided to do certified Kubernetes administrator certification. And as I learn and prepare for the certification, I'll be sharing my knowledge with you guys as usual. And uh, in this video, I just want to start by uh, talking about the benefits of Kubernetes, like how it came into picture, a little bit of history. So let's jump right in. So this is how applications have been deployed over the last two, three decades. So initially people were just deploying applications on physical servers. And this is still the case for uh, large uh, enterprise databases. And sometime in the mid 2000s, uh, VM started getting popular. So companies started embracing VMs and uh, in 2013 or around that time basically containers were introduced and people started use, using containers a lot uh, to deploy their applications as companies like started using more and more containers uh, they needed like an orchestration mechanism to uh, create and manage their containers so that's when kubernetes uh, started getting popular right because kubernetes was uh, developed by Google to manage, you know, Google's containers, like basically for search and Gmail and all these different services, they were using a lot of containers and they were using Kubernetes for it. So now that uh, we know like what happened when, uh, let's actually look at some disadvantages, some reasons why like technology kept evolving, starting with physical servers. So if you look at physical servers, uh, when a company like needs a physical server, they need to actually buy it, right? So they need to procure it and it, it costs money. Like, of course, everything costs money, but you need like a lot of capital upfront to buy a physical server. And then once you buy it, then like you need a bunch of like uh, engineers, a bunch of admins to install it in the data center you need to keep the server cool so that all the cooling equipments are required. Uh, so you need like to spend a lot of money actually to set it up in the first place. So that's a big disadvantage. Another one is actually the amount of time it takes to actually procure, install and get it ready for use. So it takes like several months for this whole process actually. So this is very inefficient. And finally, wasted resources. So companies used to buy these like big physical servers and deploy applications on them. And when the applications run, they don't even consume uh, like 10% of the CPU. So the 90% is actually sort of like a cushion for this application for one or two days in a year when uh, the application would be really busy. So all these resources were mainly wasted for most of the time. Now moving on to virtual machines. Yes, virtual machines were a great progress definitely because now companies do not need to buy a physical server and spend all this time to set it up. They can just like partition this one uh, physical server and create multiple virtual machine on the, uh, on the same physical server. Uh, but that wasn't good enough because on this virtual machine, you have to install a guest operating system. And then there is this hypervisor, which is used for managing all these virtual machines. So, and these two things also consume a lot of resources, which is considered overhead. So also you have to take care of the operating system license and you need to manage these operating systems, like patch it and then keep them secure etc etc so again this was all like waste of resources so now that you understand the disadvantages of physical machines and virtual machines uh, you will see like why containers are so important now containers are very small right like they, they are like few hundred mb so they can be downloaded from this uh, registry uh, really fast and they can be started like in a in a matter of few seconds so they are really fast and lightweight and because these things are very small and they only contain the application code and its dependencies, 
uh, when the application runs actually it's going to consume only the resources that it needs and containers do not have their own operating system like they use the host operating system which is installed on the physical server they kind of share that operating system all these containers even though they are sharing the operating system they don't really like they are all isolated like you know you will once you get into this one container you will not see anything uh, in a different container uh, and so on actually so they are all pretty isolated containers are really what you need if you or if your company is thinking about microservices, right? Because the age of monolithic, huge applications deployed on this one physical server is gone. Uh, now companies need a lot more flexibility. The applications should be more available. And, uh, you know, the, the all this like rollout process, everything should be very efficient. And microservice architecture or the cloud native architecture offers that to the companies. Now, once a company starts using containers, very soon they're going to have like dozens or uh, hundreds of containers running on their servers at any one point, right? So you need like a software to kind of like orchestrate these containers, like when they are created, where they are created, how many containers you need to run, which network port, etc., etc. All that is managed by Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes, uh, again, like I said, it helps you schedule the containers, right? So let's say like a node is busy, uh, you know, it helps a container uh, to move to a different node, like it schedules it on a different node. Uh, when the traffic is really high, it scales out, uh, basically, it increases the number of replicas of a container where your application is running. It makes the deployment really really easy like you can say that okay deploy it on this container and then route the traffic from here to here etc etc so that is actually why you need kubernetes and even if uh, you know containers start crashing for some reason kubernetes can keep up with that they can actually like uh, create another container to maintain this the number of replicas that you actually desire and uh, that you specified in this configuration file.